Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. You can connect with the Master's Voice on other platforms such as Facebook. I'm going to leave the link below. You can also connect on Rumble, BitChute, and Brighton. These are alternate channels where you can find a more complete collection of the Master's Voice prophecies. There are some things that I was no longer able to keep hosted here because of so much censorship and so much pushback from YouTube um, that the Lord actually told me remove those things because um, it's not worth the entire channel being removed. And so I took them down. God protected those prophecies here on CV-19 and what was going on in the United States and what was behind all that. And what was the Lord saying to people concerning that for a year, a year, those prophecies were up here. And so they've been moved to Rumble, BitChute, and Brighton, and you can find them under the medical playlists. And BitChute and Brighton are definitely where you can find playlists. These videos are available in Spanish. The channel is right here on YouTube. It is called La Voz del Señor, and you can find it by looking in the description box just below the heading of the Master's Voice Prophecy blog name. So just click the description, and that's where you can find all information about the channel. Everything um, that is in each video is there. The website is there. Um, what else is there? There's a lot of information down there, so you can just look and check. And I have quite a few prophecies that I have had. There are about five of them, and so I will try to make them as time allows. Going back to at least this one has been on the blog for a week. This is actually a prophecy that God has been giving me since 2021, perhaps earlier, but I can't pinpoint it. But definitely the Lord has been bringing this to mind since 2021, Concerning the city of Damascus that Isaiah the prophet prophesied against so many centuries ago in Isaiah chapter 17. The title of this prophecy is called Damascus shall be destroyed. And the date, the official date for this one that I received is March the 29th, 2023. But there is an older one and I will get to that because I published it. I will get to that one that contained prophetic insights from... 2022 and there also Damascus in Syria was mentioned. And so the prophecy that we will be looking at today discusses the savagery of U.S. warfare. That is correct. These are the Lord's words that America is savage in her warfare, that she literally will spare no expense to spill the blood of foreigners and say that it was worth it. And so the prophecy that Isaiah made all those centuries ago is very short concerning what I will be speaking about today. The verse is this, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city and it will be a ruinous heap. And this prophecy is concerning the ancient city of Damascus that is in Syria in the Middle East. And so in 2021, that's the earliest I can pin it. I don't have written prophecy for this. What the Lord will do is when he's getting ready to download a prophecy or when he wants me to just be aware of something that is going to be of importance at some time, he will simply draw the verse to my attention and then he will say something from the verse so that I have to go and look it up. And what he started saying to me back in 2021 was Damascus would, will be destroyed. That was all he would say. Damascus will be destroyed. He never gave an explanation. He never gave any backstory. And so I would file this away in my, in my mind. And then it would come up again a few months later. Sometimes it would come up when I just wake up from sleep. Then the Lord just says out of the clear blue, Damascus will be destroyed. And then I will think, ah, yes, I hear you, Lord. You have said this before. Damascus will be destroyed. But until God makes a prophecy official, I never write it down. And so the first written prophecy that I have concerning a coming war between the United States and Syria is from the 30th of March, 2022. And on that day, the Lord began to explain to me and say that Syria is not what people think. Syria is not some fly by night nation. Syria didn't just declare independence five minutes ago. Syria is way older than the United States because Syria actually occupies biblical reference. 
It is a city with a rich history that dates back as far as other nations or other powerful empires and kingdoms such as Babylon and things like that. And so God was saying back then in March 2022 that many people think that because Syria has faced so much military attack and Syria has been at the center of so many military conflicts that have left Damascus a shattered memory of its former glory, they think that because Damascus looks as busted up as it does now, that Isaiah 17 has been fulfilled. But the Lord began to speak to me back then, and he said that it has not, that in fact a future war between America and Syria is coming. And this will not be a spat or a skirmish like it will be between America and Iran. This will be an actual war where countries fight. And that's where Damascus is going to be completely destroyed by the United States of America. Now, as the Lord was speaking to me, I had the understanding that war is just, it's not only where you get two evenly balanced powers. So it's not only a war if Russia and China fight or if China and somebody else or China and Russia fight. It's not only war when the opponents are equally matched in terms of size, in terms of territory, in terms, in terms of technology, in terms of weapons, in terms of military skill. A war is also, for instance, where America went to war against the tiny nation of Iraq that did not match her on any of the skills I just spoke of, size, territory, military, technology, skill, strategy, weapons, nothing. It was still a war, and ironically, that event is called the Iraq War, even though the United States was the one who started it and the one who carried out 99.9% .9 of all hostilities, including a very long-ranging and damaging occupation. And so here is the recent word. This is from March 29th, 2023, that the Lord gave me concerning a war that will come between two heavily unmatched powers, Syria in the Middle East and the United States of America. The border towns of Syria will be destroyed by the U.S. Army and Damascus will be taken away. America will bomb the capital of Syria until it is reduced to rubble and the prophecy of the Lord against Damascus shall be fulfilled. To reduce a place to rubble is not a casual deed. It cannot happen by mistake. It is a calculated act, and it shows great malice. America moves with malice across the earth, and the hatred of many against her has come to a specific boil. The border towns of Syria will be destroyed, and the capital, Damascus, will be taken away. And right after that, the Lord began to speak again of this thing that he had brought up in a previous prophecy, which is carpet bombing. And he spoke of carpet bombing when he was bringing up how malicious and murderous the United States was when it employed carpet bombing in Vietnam. He said that this is a particularly malicious and careless approach to war, it shows no care, no time to take military strategy, and no compassion when you drop bombs all over the place with no regard for what you might be destroying. So it doesn't matter if you've found particular military targets, like you know for sure this is a naval shipyard, or you know for sure this is where they have fictional weapons of mass destruction. What you do is you just fly in, and whether it's a school, it's a town, it's a retirement home for old people in the Middle East, you just fly in and you just bomb everything. You pour out thousands and thousands of bombs out of planes and they basically destroy the place with no regard or research or care for what you might be destroying. And the Lord continued, and these are his words. The U.S. approach is to destroy everything in sight and to count death and suffering as collateral damage. This means damage that is secondary to their desires and objectives. Damage that is considered a side issue, something that is not as important as America achieving its objectives in that region. America did this in Hiroshima with an atom bomb, testing its might and technology against living human beings. 
America poured great amounts of napalm from the skies over Vietnam, consigning its people to hot and fiery deaths, along with untold generations of twisted reality afterward. No care was taken. No, count, no cost was counted. Therefore, says the Lord, the conqueror went to conquer and will be conquered in return by her enemies. Go forth and destroy, O destroyer, until you are destroyed. Go and show no mercy, for no mercy will be shown to you. And so with the Lord speaking about the type of warfare that America employs, that she destroys everything in sight. Excuse me, please. She destroys everything in sight, and she counts death and human suffering as collateral. Collateral means that you have a clear objective, and your objective is here. You're going this way. But then let's say that there is something else in the way, a fence or an obstacle, you're willing to batter and plow and smash your way through whatever is in front of you. And that is counted as collateral damage. But what God is saying here is the collateral that America is damaging and has damaged across the world is actually human beings. She tested her might with the atom bomb and she tested technology against living human beings. She poured great amounts of napalm from the skies and consigned the people of Vietnam to hot and fiery deaths that resulted in untold generations of twisted reality afterwards. She didn't take any care and she didn't count the cost. And so God says that America is a conqueror that now must complete the role that she started. She started out as conquering and she will be conquered in return by her enemies. And he says, you are a destroyer that has destroyed. So go forth and continue to destroy until you are destroyed. And as you go forth to wars and conflicts, do it and show no mercy. For when your day comes, no mercy will be shown to you. And I have often spoken here of the things that Russia and China will do when they come here. Um, if you are new, I strongly suggest that you not get carried away by the different types of videos that I've been making recently covering banking information and the rise of a coming digital currency and God is still speaking on that. I have more words to post on that. Go back to the beginning. The very first prophecies that the Lord spoke to me to put on the Master's Voice prophecy blog are about Russia and China and there are more than 25 of those words that you can find at the website www.the-masters-voice.com and simply look at the, the title menu at the top and you'll see Russia and China and there's about 18 there. And then all you can do is also go down at the bottom of the blog, there's a search box. And when you put in Russia or China, it'll bring up all the, the recent ones that I've done. And the Lord said in some of the recent prophecies that America should not be surprised by the tactics by the behavior, by the hard-heartedness, and by the violence that Russia and China will employ here. He said that he will put it into these people's hearts to come here with vengeance. So they're not gonna come with a soft approach. In one prophecy that is called Russia, War and Contamination, War, Conquest and Contamination, I saw that these people came here with so much anger. And God was explaining in several prophecies that what Russia will do here is the direct mirror of what the United States has done all over the world. So some of the things that I have seen in the prophecies is that they will greatly humiliate Americans. They're going to take people's clothes off exactly as they did, as America has done in ancient documented slavery. Most people like to come and argue as if they will be able to argue this thing in front of Jesus Christ, but I'm content to hold my peace and simply bring forth the words of the Lord as they are. Russia and China will come here and take people's clothes off. They will strip them to the skin. And the Lord says that he will bring a humbling type of shame upon a nation that likes to be stripped to the skin already because people do not like to wear clothes. They do not like to stay away from sexual immorality. They do not like to practice modesty of any kind. And so he says, you will be naked in front of who you do not want to be naked 
in front of. And I saw that people will be stripped to the skin and put in camps. And the Lord says that the land of America will become defiled by this act, exactly how they defiled the African Americans and the Native Americans by stripping them to the skin and also by practicing heinous crimes of rape and other types of sexual perversion against them. And so what I saw is that people, families were made naked in front of each other. Please excuse the noise. Families were made naked in front of each other. And this is what the Lord called defiling. How is it defiling? In the book of Leviticus, you are strictly forbidden from, from looking upon your parents' nakedness. So as a child, you're not supposed to be seeing your parents naked, especially when you become an older child and you have awareness and understanding. So I'm not speaking about babies. When a father is made to strip off in front of his daughters and his son, this is defiling both for the father's own honor and dignity and defiling for the children who are never supposed to see that. And God says that son will look upon mother's nakedness and daughter will look upon father's nakedness and by this the land will be defiled. Another thing that I saw is that the Russians were extremely cruel and they mocked Americans and they would ask people who were chained up in the camps or should I say zip tied in the camps, they would ask them, so where is all the victory from your movies? All these American movies, all the time, Russia is the bad guy and America is the hero. But where are the American heroes to come and save you from your judgment? They will call it judgment. They will call it punishment. They will not be confused about why they are here. I have said in many videos that God will put it in Vladimir Putin's heart to put it in his soldiers' hearts that this is a moral obligation that they will be carrying out and that God is supportive of their mission, that God is requiring them to do this. So just like the so-called um, religious holy wars of the past, this is how even non-Christian China will see that we are going over to the land of men who wear dresses and we are going to bring back law and order. And so they mocked people and they asked, where are the action heroes? Where are the guys from the Hollywood movies? And things like that. Another thing they did is they humbled people. They hit them when people would not obey. And I said that it is a curious thing for God to be showing me these visions over a period of at least six to seven years, where even when American found, Americans found themselves in a terrible situation, a, a situation that would tell any other person of any other sanity, that you are not in a good spot here. You do not have much going for you at this time. It is best to fall back within yourself, practice self-control and observe to see, like Habakkuk on the wall, what God will say to you. But because there is very little restraint in people, especially in the people who call themselves Christians, Americans could not resist talking back. You see a guy with a Kalashnikov or whatever the new hip gun is in the gun world. I don't know. He's speaking to you in the English that he has and telling you to move here, line up here, do this. And then you want to talk back and have attitude and be rebellious. And they were just hitting people. They were hitting people with those weapons. They would knock people down to the ground and put their boots on their heads. And the Lord said that this is what American soldiers do when they go overseas. They put their boots on the heads of Iraqis. They put their boots on the heads of people in Afghanistan and men in those other Middle Eastern countries when they go to occupy or to fight wars. And there was even a fewer here in the, in the United States where a picture leaked of soldiers doing that. And so the Lord says that we should not be surprised whatever we see these nations doing. When they come here, they are coming to conquer the conqueror who conquered others. They're coming to destroy the destroyer who destroyed others and they will show no mercy because America showed no mercy. The father said that Russia will carpet bomb American cities until there's nothing left behind. They will utterly destroy entire neighborhoods and leave only silence in their wake. This means that you can hearken back to World War II and think of those carpet bombing activities of Hitler and how entire neighborhoods were silent because if people were not able to go to shelters fast enough, the entire neighborhood was ruined. And so he said that no care will be taken by the Russians and they will not bother to do any reconnaissance 
as America doesn't do reconnaissance before she bombs, he said they will not even bother to map the place and see who's living there. Russian planes will simply drop bombs over entire cities, and there will be no warning or chance to escape. They will carpet bomb America, just as America has done to other nations in the past. The Lord says that what America has done in the past will be revisited on her in the future. And then he said, my word is sure. It is the hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. And before I continue this prophecy, I will bring in here a matter that the Lord brought to my attention during one of the prophecies. I saw a vision. I think this was also in the May 30th, 2022 prophecy. I will link that video below, as well as the written message. I saw a vision of America as a very big explorer standing on the map of the world. So the map was laid out and America was a man, which is, I said, is very odd because the Lord does not often show this country depicted as a man. He usually depicts it as a blonde woman that is very defiant, very rebellious, and also very promiscuous and never, and one who doesn't want to listen to anything the Lord is saying. But I saw this man and he was dressed in the old explorer clothes and he had his hands on his hips like this and he was standing on the map and he had one normal hand, a human hand, and his other hand was a very big metal hammer. And I think the whole hand, it wasn't the hammer that we used to type tap nails. It was more like a mallet, like a very huge iron mallet, very big with a double headed thing like this. And that was what formed this man's arm till about here. And with this arm, he was looking at the map and then he would see a country and then he would hit that country. And I said that when America hit that nation, the map, the map crushed and crumbled under the weight of that mallet. There was a huge dent and the map was destroyed in that spot. And as I was watching this man, he was hitting here and he would hit there and hit there. And it soon became, became apparent to me that this man was hitting in more places than the wars that we have officially declared. He was hitting many places. And when the Lord led me back to study, I discovered that one of America's tactics in war is never to officially declare war on other countries. So she does not follow Geneva Conventions and other United Nations rules and says, we America declare war against you, Afghanistan, because once you do that, you actually have to follow United Nations and Geneva Con Convention protocols for how to do the warfare and how to treat the POWs, the prisoners of war that you catch. By evading this clause, America is able to go in and carry out very savage forms of warfare that are extreme human rights abuses. And yet, because she has not declared war under these provisions, nobody ever says anything to her. And so this man was hitting and hitting and hitting, and he began to get this very savage and crazy look in his eyes. He began to look very much filled with bloodlust. And he was, it was like he was playing a game of whack-a-mole, hit a nation here and hit a nation here and crush a country there. And then all of a sudden I saw two human hands in heaven holding an extremely sharp sword. And with both hands on the sword, those hands came down and they cut off the hammer from the United States. They did not hit in the metal part. They did not hit at the part of her strength. They cut the arm of flesh and the entire arm fell to the map, bloody and broken off. And America bowed down with the sudden shock and agony of that blow that she had been struck. And if you want to know what that blow is, I will link the prophecy below. It is called Contamination, War and Conquest. And it's under the title Russia. And God said that Russia is going to strike the United States a preemptive strike. A preemptive strike means that you and your opponent are having words and you're bouncing in the ring like two boxers that are evenly matched and both of you know that you have the ability to cause great harm and damage to each other. And so what will happen is before the match officially starts, before it goes ding ding, one of them will throw a knockout punch. It's a dirty form of warfare. It's a dirty form of activity, but then God says it is perfectly in keeping with what the United States has done historically. And so that surprise attack 
that surprise shock will come from the nation of Russia. And God says they will do a preemptive strike against America at a time when she is absolutely not expecting it. And it will be such a quick, lightning, devastating blow that America will never be able to recover during that very brief period of what is not exactly war, but invasion. And so that is what I saw concerning the hammer of the whole earth that is actually Mystery Babylon, the United States. And so after writing down the, the Lord's words, a few things puzzled me. Why did he call the death of people in Vietnam hot and fiery? And why did he say that America poured the death on Vietnam? Can you pour nahum, napalm? Is napalm very hot liquid? Is it a liquid that you pour out or is it a bomb? And I went to check. I said to Google, is napalm hot and fiery? And I was not prepared for what Google said. G Google says that napalm is boiling, that it burns at temperatures between 800 to 900 C all the way up to 1,200 degrees Celsius. That's 1,470 to 2,190 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is a type of heat that none of us have any daily reference for. We get to the temperature that water boils at, and then we stop thinking. In addition, I found that napalm is famous for being an adherent, meaning that it is sticky. So when you pour it out upon people, it sticks to whatever it touches. That means that even when the napalm would explode and splash out on the victims or fall on them, and like all humans, you're trying to rub off that horrible burning mess at napalm sticks to you so it you can't flick it off and what burn victims did was spread the napalm more on themselves and they increased the area that they were being burnt it also creates a lot of thick black smoke while it's burning so in vietnam it had the added effect of choking all the soldiers who were hiding in the jungle because they were asphyxiating as the heat and the fire from the napalm sucked all the oxygen out of the area immediately. I found that it was used in villages where there were mostly elderly females and children when all the men had gone to fight, and that it was indeed poured out like a burning river from the sky, carrying a very great cost for victims. I learned that America dropped napalm in France in 1944, she dropped it on Japanese-held targets in the Pacific Islands. She poured it out in Korea in the 1950s war and used up almost 12 times the amount of napalm in Vietnam, 400,000 tons of it. And that is why America alone is synonymous with this weapon of war. And I began to understand God at a deeper level. And how when he speaks, he never wastes his words. And that is why when the Lord speaks to me, I always record the prophecy first, no matter what he says, whether I understand a phrase or not. Most people, if God speaks to you and you don't understand what he says, you will never write it down when you're recording your dreams. You will never write it down if he's giving you a message. You'll say, well, that doesn't make sense. And you leave it out because it doesn't make sense to you. But God knows exactly what he's saying. And that is why I write exactly what I hear. And then I go and I do further research. Because research, the Bible says that we should study to show ourselves approved. And what I found as I was researching is that there is no remorse for the type of warfare that is done here. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright is on record as saying that nearly half a million civilian deaths caused in the Iraqi war was worth it. That's right. She called it worth it. Collateral damage, meaning that you have destroyed what you don't actually have to pay for and you cannot replace. And I looked up because it was popping up in the reading, Agent Orange, and I found that among the lengthy list of things that it does, it has twisted outcomes to the victims. And so I was seeing people that had only two fingers where an arm would be. Instead of the entire baby's arm growing out with five fingers, the arm neglected to grow and only two fingers would come out of a shoulder. I saw people that had a leg like a lightning bolt. Instead of the bone growing straight with only the hinge of the knee, it grew like this and like this and like this and would dangle useless in front of these teenagers that could only sit and beg as their livelihood. 
But the thing that truly shocked me was finding out that Agent Orange so hinders human development that children were born without eyes at all. That is a person that has absolutely no developed eyes in their heads. And so this, I discovered, was what God meant by generations of twisted reality in the wake of America, for it is surely twisted to see a population lacking the basic fullness of their humanity. And yet this is the same population that has constantly told me, Celestia, why do you never talk of the special rapture that is coming for American children? Even though the children of Vietnam, some of them have never seen the sunlight. So what shall we say to these things? What is the answer of a holy God to a nation that refuses to truly face itself? If Russia comes here and does even one of the things mentioned in this video, are they evil? Are they savage? Or are they fulfilling the anger that God has said he will fully discharge upon a nation that will not accept his indictments? A nation that says we have not done this. A nation that says, but I never voted for that government. A nation that fails to understand video after video that national repentance the act of Daniel in Daniel chapter 9 is not a practice of excusing yourself and saying like Texas and Florida, well, we're separate over here. I make a video in plain English and I read out the sins of those nations. They make guns and trump their religion. And tons of people will still come and say, but I just don't understand why God would judge them. After all, we're giving safety to the blue states. There is a deafness that is in this nation and I spoke to some very humble women in the comment section, and I warned them about something that I have seen here that is a curse upon this nation. In an old video, I said that when the Lord is preparing to destroy a people, he will use the government. So why people are protesting and angry and saying, vote this person out and impeach that person, put that other person on trial. You do not see that the Lord has determined to destroy you. And one of the ways he will do it is that he says he will make capricious people. This is people who don't know their mind from one day to the next, like Mr. Biden. And childish people, like Mr. Trump, that is vindictive and says things and says that the entire world is against him. And he is the golden boy and everybody hates him, but he knows the people that love him know that he is perfect. And don't they agree? He will make women... Kamala Harris is not a coup for the United States. When you see her in the seat, know that God has disdained your nation to have a female running it. God will use the political apparatus to cut out the legs from the United States of America. But the people do not perceive this. They think that it is simply a wash and repeat rinse cycle where they run to the polls and then they press the magic button and then out comes the pop-tart of the expectation, the result that they want. Another thing that God will use to destroy a country is the curse of blindness and deafness. Just a moment, please. This thing, the Lord had to show it to me himself. Because after, after a few months, when I was in the video ministry, this is not something I really encountered when I was doing the written prophecies in 2019. When I was in the video ministry, I noticed after a very short time that it seemed to be as if people have a problem understanding when I speak. I speak clearly because I know, especially now, that God has widened the reach of the master's voice and that people all over the world are hungry to hear the words of the Lord. These people outside the U.S. are even patient, even though the majority of the prophecies are not toward them. They listen because embedded in every prophecy is admonition and exhortation and teaching of how to honor the one true God and come before him in a way that is acceptable and pleasing to him. The fear of God can be found here. But what I noticed is no matter how clearly I speak, and no matter how lengthy the videos began to get, as I explained the prophecies in detail, people still came and said, but I'm baffled. Why would God say this? Why would God be angry at us? God loves us. Where's the hope in these messages? You can't just bring these kind of messages to us without hope. 
And the Lord pointed this out to me and I will read it. It says, go and tell this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and they hear with their ears and they understand with their heart and they return and be healed. And this is a biblical curse. This curse means that you will sit in front of the truth and you will hear lies. You literally will filter in truth through the contaminated filter that is in your heart. And what your heart, after it does all the computation and it adds up all the math, your heart will tell you these words are a lie. You will hear message after message after message that has been printed out with dates on each of them, dating back all the way to 2012. When the Lord said to me, my daughter, I want you to prepare for me a people fit to meet me. No matter how many times I explain that mandate, that if you do not become fit to meet the Lord, it means you are unfit and you will not be received into his eternal glory and kingdom in heaven with him. People still are focused on the total minor things instead of opening their ears. And I had to be shown by God that most people cannot hear that there is a stumbling spirit at work in the United States that makes people to call evil good the evil of the false prophets, the leaven and the lies that they feed people because there is answering leaven and lies in people's hearts. The false prophets are actually working by spirits that can discern the rot inside people and they give people what they know people want. They are dry clouds. They are deserted fountains. They give you sand and dry grass and you choke on those things and you call them edifying. You love them and you say to them, grace, grace unto it, heap it up. But where the, where the Lord has put a hidden spring for you and your children, for you and your grandmother, your young, your old, regardless of race, regardless of background, regardless of original nationality, regardless of any kind of affiliation, where he put a hidden spring that you drink from it and you become pierced like the people in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, the people who cried out and Peter had to answer them and said, repent and be baptized. They cried out and said, what must we do to be saved? Only a tiny, tiny, unbelievable, tiny minority. People think this is such a big channel. This nation has 340 million people, and the majority of those people have never heard the Lord's words. They have never heard his accusations against this country for all the sins that we are famous for outside these borders. And among those who find it, only a small portion go into the repentance of Daniel chapter 9 saying, Lord, we are guilty of these things. We have done these things. We love our infants, but we have caused the infants of other people to grow up with lightning bolt legs and to have no eyes. We have been complicit generation after generation, administration after administration. We have allowed the rise of a corrupted horn in our midst. And now we sit here at the end of our days blaming the corrupted horn and saying it's all the government's fault because that's what people think. They think that a government of the people and by the people appears from the sky without any kind of joining from the nation itself, from the ordinary people itself. And they say, but my robes are clean. I have not done this not knowing that Jesus Christ, the robe inspector, is coming to point out the major and devastating stains upon the robes of the harlot. And that is why Revelation 18 contains not a shred of mercy, not a shred of compassion from Jesus Christ. If you have heard no prophecy on this blog, this one will remind you yet again 
There can be no mercy to one who does not cry out for mercy. And the only reason that men cry out for mercy is because they acknowledge their sin. And that is something this country cannot do and will not do. I see the liar saying, well, America is not Babylon. America is Nineveh. They say it so confidently. And they don't know that in order to be Nineveh, you must be cut to the heart. You must accept the charge. You cannot protest that you didn't do it. You must put on the sackcloth and repent. If Mystery Babylon was repenting, then it would be written in her final charge in Revelation 18. It is not because she will never do it. This is Celestial from the Master's Voice. This is the prophecy from the end of March, March 29, 2023. Syria and America will have a war, and America will bomb that country to pieces. And Damascus, as the Lord says, shall be destroyed. And another thing that the Lord said in the old prophecies is that President Assad is going to have an extreme form of hatred in his heart for the United States. He says that America's actions against Syria will bring out strong anti-American rhetoric, and that will mark the start of a new era of anti-American rhetoric where even the smallest countries are not going to be afraid to come to the mic and say what they think openly against America on state TV. It says that America's bombing and military assault against Syria will be what drives President Assad into the arms of Russia and that nation will also be an end times ally of Mr. Putin against the United States. Thank you for being with me. I am Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice. Until I see you again, goodbye.